we have an all-star cast of developers and designers, and there, there's too many people to list. So what I'm going to do is we're just going to ask them and turn their cameras on. Here's Jenny Saib. Forgive me if I'm pronouncing that incorrectly. Jenny, are you there? I am. It's not working. There we go. There we are. Did I get that right, Jenny Saib? You Saib, you did. Now that Robin nobody, Cox. Nobody ever gets it right. <laughs> I have a friend. I have a friend who's Saib, but with a Y. So I just took a big guess. Here's Bill's back from yesterday. Welcome back, Bill. Awesome. So I'm just going to hand the buck over to you guys. Have a great time. I'm right here if you need me. Bye, y'all. And we are waiting for Brandy. Oh, Ooh, Brandy. Brandy is joining any minute. Um, but I do want to just quit. Oh, there she is. I want to quickly explain what this session is all about. So throughout the day, we've been talking about games from our perspective, from various different um, roles within the company, whether it's marketing or sales or operating or creative. Now you're going to have a perspective from the people who really use it, the instructional designers and one developer um, who also has an instructional design background. Um, and what we asked them to do was show uh, how easy it is to put a game from the training arcade once you've made it into an e-learning course, whether it's Captivate, Lectora, Articulate, or even PowerPoint. Because what we always say here at the game agency is we understand that you have made an investment in these e-learning authoring tools that you feel strongly about them, that they do great things. We want your games, we want the games to enhance what you do. We, we know it's not gonna replace it. So that is what they're going to talk about. And I will pass the baton on, and I will shut off my camera, to Jenny and have her started. Hi. So I'm not sure how I should go about, should I just start by sharing my screen, Jennifer? Yep. That would be perfect. Okay. Can everybody see what I see? The power of the presentation? Yep, we can see your screen. We see the PowerPoint. Looks good. Can okay. you put it in uh, presentation mode? It might be easier to see. Yes, maybe. I've got so many things. I know. I have 8 million tabs too. There we go. How's that? Presenter view. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so we are developers and instructional designers at eLearning Brothers, and we're going to kind of just walk through some of the advantages of incorporating games and gamification into e-learning and how easy it is, like Jennifer said, to incorporate games into our existing content and e-learning modules that we produce. Don't replace what you do enhance it, how to incorporate games into your e-learning courses and presentations using Lectora, Articulate, Captivate, or PowerPoint. So why games? So some of this I know was already covered in the last session. So I'll kind of go through it quickly. But if you look down here at the bottom, I'm not even gonna really try on his last name, Mihaly Sixzens. Mihaly says, if you're interested in something, you will focus on it. And if you focus attention on anything, it is likely that you will become interested in it. And such is the case with games in e-learning. So some of the power that games brings to e-learning is that it enhances engagement, breaks the cycle of predictability, gives you the opportunity to incorporate story in e-learning, encourages learners to think critically and strategically and to solve problems creatively, engages and motivates learners with characters, stories, and challenges, facilitates cooperation and collaboration with peers, all of which improves retention in our learners. So I am going to just how easy it is to incorporate TGA games in PowerPoint. It's super easy as it is with all of the authoring tools, PowerPoint being one of those. So within PowerPoint, all you're going to do once you have a game is you're going to open and edit a game in the training arcade. 
arcade. So this is the training arcade subscribers page. So once you have created a game, you're going to go to publish and then you're going to copy that link. You also have the opportunity to do a SCORM package and embed it that way as well. So you're going to click pu publish and then you're going to copy that link or the embed code, whatever you choose. And then after that, you just go into PowerPoint. Go to, you import and The easiest way that I found to do it in PowerPoint is to import an image. And my screen seems to be hiding at the bottom down here. So you can't really, see, I can't seem to move it. There we go. So I imported an image of one of the subscriber page images on the game agency. And then once you've done that, you simply go to insert an object or link and you can paste the URL. It's as easy as that. And I will now pass the baton over to... I think Brandy is next. Correct. Thank you. That's great. Hello, I am Brady Jacobs. I am the uh, Learning Experience Design Team Manager here at the Learning Brothers. Um, I wanted to share kind of just how easy and quick it is to import a slide into Storyline, to import a game into Storyline. So let me go ahead and share my screen. And I will um, just do a quick demo actually in Storyline. So really the process for inserting into Storyline, it's very similar to PowerPoint. You're basically um, entering it as a web object. Let me make a new slide here. So you would basically go up to the player ribbon and select web object and you would copy and paste your URL. And I'm going to go and grab a URL from the demo, from a demo, and I will paste it in here and select OK. And here you have it. Uh, you can resize it. I'm going to resize this to 1024 by 768 just because I know that that's the story size that I have. To move it around. Actually, it's not 1024 by 768. It's a different size. And it is, I believe, 576. Let me check the other slide. Yep, 576. So let's go in and fix that. And then you just click publish. And I'll go ahead and publish it to review. And here you have it. You have your game embedded right in the software, right in the tool. And I can preview and play it. And if you had other slides, you could um, link the other slides to it uh, so that it would flow in a course. Um, you know, it could be that you use these, you know, as an intro to a course for, um, I've seen them used before as a pre-assessment or as, as kind of a, a reflection activity at the beginning, like a knowledge check, um, even something to gain their attention and grasp um, and get them thinking about how, how they would, uh, how they would use um, what's coming and draw them into the material as well or, or different ways that will you can use these uh, these templates these games uh, we'll talk a little bit more later if there's time about the different types of games and when when you might use them in a learning experience I have um, added a couple of slides with some detail as well that that we can address later if there's time Awesome, thank you, Brandy. Uh, so now we will move to Robin. Hi, so <clears throat> I'm your lecturer expert today and I'll share my screen. I'm kind of new to this tool, so hang in there. Um, 
Share screen. Here we go. So the first time you do it with Lectora online is the most painful. There's a couple of steps, um, but the first time you do it, that's the after that, it's fine. So what you'll do is you open up Lectora uh, online. I'll get that open. Hang on a second. Shoot. Actually, um, hang on, I'm sharing the wrong screen. Okay, uh, can we switch to the Captivate one and come back to me? Yes, of course. Um, okay. That would you be? That would be you, Bill. Yeah, <clears throat> no problem whatsoever. And if uh, if you need me to drive for any reason on LO, let me know, Robin. I can. Uh, okay, I found it. Sorry. <laughs> okay, perfect. All right. Uh, so I'm not gonna, you know, kind of do too much here because you're gonna see a lot of repetition, right? Um, Captivate's remarkably easy. It's a lot like Storyline just was. Um, what you're going to see is that I am, I assume you can see my Captivate right now. All I'm going to really do in Captivate, just like we did in Storyline, is I'm going to insert a web object, right? iframe, whatever you want to call it. In Captivate, it's real simple. You just go up to your top ribbon, hit the objects drop down, click web, and it's going to pop that little web object in there. You just go over to the side panel under properties. Um, you've got this address bar right there. Just paste in whatever the URL was from your game. Um, same exact process that that uh, uh, we just saw a second ago, right? Coming into Storyline, same thing as PowerPoint. So you're going to get it from those published settings. I'm not going to do that here. Press Enter. And in Captivate, it auto previews so you can see the game live in your course, whatever that is. And just like Brandy was showing you a second ago, you can drag to resize, update your... Uh, your game on the fly and uh you can even you know hit a preview and and play it um that's it for captivate super simple cool okay sorry about that got a little bit of stage fright so back to lectora online and i'm sharing my screen i hope yeah there we go um so you go to lectora online log in robin i don't think you're sharing your screen yet oh sorry there we go Okay, so I just logged into Lectora online, and then you go into your course. So in this case, I've got this fire safety course. And you can insert it. So I was thinking it could replace the quiz. So I'll put it here. And then I've already got the game agency or the, the learning uh, game here, the training arcade included, but if you didn't, what you could go to is go to file, preferences, go to apps, and then insert your subdomain and API key, which you can find if you go to the training arcade website where you're building the games and you can, um, can't remember where you can find that, but um, you just uh, pull in that data into, um, into Lectora Online here and here, and then it will link up here. So then I can put in the games that I built or the, the demos here. So. For instance, this one. And it would just pull it in right there. Or if you're in regular Lectora desktop, it's as easy as just hitting web window here and then pasting in the game link from the training arcade. Gotta find that window. That URL right here. You would just copy and paste it into there. And then it would let me grab that real quick. Shoot. Here it is. Copy. 
and then go back to Electora desktop and then paste it in. And it would link right there. And then you're done. And that's that's how you get um, you can insert your TGA games in Lector Online and Lector Desktop. Awesome, thank you. We we do already have a couple questions, um, and just speak up if you want to answer them. Um, oh, I see, Brandy, you did already answer the one about AICC. Yes, yeah, so I'm not sure if that went to everyone though. I think it may have just went to the panelists. Um, Storyline will allow you to publish in AICC um, and all of the standard formats pretty much. Okay, great. Um, oh, Lucy asks, how can you tell when the game is complete? And I think, I don't know if she means when the game is complete in the training arcade or when it's completely inserted into the course, but um, the game is complete in the training arcade once you save it. Um, you can just build a portion of it and save it and be able to just share it with the link. So if uh, Lucy, if you want to expand on, on what you mean by that, um, but you'll, oh, when it's inserted into the course. So it's pretty much when you see it show up, um, when Brandy had it, you could see the Jeopardy screen, that splash page showed up, which is when you know it's complete and you can- um, And there will usually it. be, I think most of the games I have seen have had some kind of a results slide at the end that will tell the learner when it's done. Cool. Um, Robert asks, can the game's aspect ratio be modified to match the course? That's basically what I showed with Storyline and what Bill yes. also demonstrated in that we can, you can resize it to match uh, what you, what your file size is, what your story, like your story size or your Captivate size is. Yeah. It looks like you can either enter it or stretch it to match. Randy, if you, if you want to just go to those couple of slides that you wanted to share. Seems like we have a little bit of time. And Robin, I know you have a hard stop. If, if you want to drop off, I totally understand. Sure, sure. Let me um, share my screen again. So a common question that we get on the instructional design side is um, when to use different types of games and, and what types of games should you pick for different types of interactions? Um, so we, there are some resources that can help. One of them is a chart that I will share in just a second that, that stems from some of the Dr. Carl Kapp's resources on gamification and he kind of walks IDs through the process of, of choosing different types of activities for different things, that, concepts that you're trying to teach or convey to your learners. And I'll get to that in a second. I felt like... Um, before I even jump into that, it's it's probably a good idea to take a step back even from that and define kind of what he means by what's meant by the different types of gamification in that chart. Uh, when you think about how games are defined, usually you'll see two different types of games uh, it, within any e learning course. And one of them is content gamification where you're using where you're taking existing content and you're applying like game-like dynamics to it, mechanics and elements to make it seem game-like, but it's not really, may not be a full-fledged game. It might be some content that you're taking and you're gamifying just a piece of it, like the assessment, or you might be gamifying it in other ways by adding thing, elements like meter scoring, things like that. Uh, to immerse the learners in uh, kind of that game-like play. The other type of gamification you'll see is the structural gamification, which uses template formats to create a game-like structure without being a game itself. Um, it could be when you think of things like choose your own adventure is an, is an example of a structural gamification where there might be a course map at the beginning and they're going through this whole sequence of engaging with the content. Um, I saw a demo from an ID yesterday that had 
this big classroom map that they created and the learners were going in and interacting with different pieces of content in the order of the map and they were unlocking escape rooms and things like that as they were going. And um, that's kind of a, that's a form of structural gamification. Um, so when might you use content versus structural gamification? Um, here are some examples that I pulled from Dr. Capps uh, resources, as well as kind of just, just some experience that we've had with designing games uh, on the custom side. Um, if you're teaching new content to new learners, content gamification is very appropriate because it makes sure that it helps the learners. It gives them that play-like structure while giving them the content that they need to interact with the game at the same time. Uh, if you're motivating learners to move through a curriculum, such as uh, the example of using like a course map or some kind of adventure type of activity, choose your own adventure type of activity, um, that would be an example of a structural game, structural form of gamification. If you're... Uh, wanting to independently build skills, you could kind of go either way. If you're teaching new skills, you could weave that into, weave some content gamification in, or you could even interweave some structural gamification and have, you know, maybe it's like the, a, a map, but you're also integrating in at little stages, some elements of content gamification where they're picking up that content. That, that they need to be able to learn those, to be able to learn and practice and apply those skills. Um, so I wanted to give an example of each of those different types as well as to kind of break it down a little bit in terms of some of the TGA games that you might see in some of our more templated games to, to give some ideas as well about how you might use those. Um, one of them is assessing knowledge of facts, concepts, or terms, and you've seen some of that with the puzzle solving games and uh, the, the word games and even the, um, the, the one where they're kind of dropping and they're catching things as they're going. Um, you can also use games to teach how to construct meaning. Basically, I like to think of it as a push for a pull versus push kind of thing where you're 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 letting them pull what they need to to practice the simulations or to practice applying the content to uh, the concepts or the performing the task in a game like structure without them really thinking they're learning anything they're more um, engaged in the fun and the interaction and the applying of the knowledge um, strategy games are another option where you're engaging them in that deeper level of critical thinking. It might be um, where you have them actually going in and let's say you have a, a sales professional or something like that and they have to interact with a customer. You might weave in some kind of game in there where they actually have to respond with, with what, they, what they might say or they actually have to select correct responses and go down this correct path. Uh, there's ways to make that even game-like where they have to make these strategic decisions and they're getting scoring and they're getting that feedback all along the way. Um, there's also um, fantasy games that can be used to help them uh, apply knowledge to new situations where you might have them conceptualize, okay, if I approach this, if I had this situation come up, how might I use this? And that's kind of something where if you think back on novice to expert, uh, designing curriculum for a novice versus an expert, the, the fantasy and the strategy games would be more along the line of what you might do for an expert that's already used to making those quick decisions so that those could be used to help them practice, practice making those quick decisions. All right, um, that is all I have at a very high level. It's just kind of my quick overview of, you know, when you might use different types of games. Um, I will leave some room for anybody that might have any questions. Uh, yeah, there are a few. Um, there is one that 
is um, in reference to review link. Um, we games are not compatible with review link, but if you put a game in Lectora, for instance, it would publish in review link, just like we showed. Am I correct? Okay. Um, but but arcades wouldn't be viewable in review link. I'm trying to get clarity on that, but I'm pretty confident that is the case. Um, there was another, uh, let's see. Oh, Liv um, wanted to know about stats, adoption rates, and uh, interest. I did live, and I, I wrote at live instead of at live, but that's because it's the end of the day, so my spelling is out the window. Um, I sent a link to you for a game study that's on our website, um, if you want to check that out as far as stats. Um, as far as what population has surprised us um, in terms of engaging, the um, finding games engaging, I'm not sure if you're referring to like generations or industries. Um, we have found that all generations are interested in using games for training um, from the Gen Z to the baby boomers, um, which is great. Um, and as far as industries, I'd say our strongest industries are pharma, healthcare, finance, and tech are our most, not sure if that answers the question. Feel free to elaborate um, if I didn't respond to what you were asking. Um, could we, oh, um, Brandy, Georgia would like a copy of the slides. Yes, yes. Will we be posting this anywhere after the conference? Yes, we will. We will be okay. posting these recordings. They'll all be on our YouTube channel and I can add those slides as a download in the email that we send out once the recordings are available. Okay, great. great. Um, and I think, oh, wait, there's a few more questions that came in the Q&A. Oh, okay. Uh, as a content creator, how do you assess the length and depth of the content? The starting and ending portions of games are essential as the as the meat, the content. Are there set limitations depending on the game type? Um, that is that is a good question. And and you know, for, with the training arcade, as you saw with Richard's presentation, um, each game is so incredibly different. Um, they all have different um, question types. They all have different ways of playing. Um, so it would be hard to answer that for all games, but I'll let the instructional designers, maybe Brandy, if you want to mm -hmm. answer that. Yeah, I, I would think that that could vary too, based on the complexity uh, of what in your objectives and what you're trying to um, have the learners do, because as you get more complex into your fantasy games and your strategy games, obviously those will be um, a little bit longer, those will be a little bit more in depth and a little bit more complicated to even build out and plan out from an IV perspective. Um, and again, it, it would, it, you would, you would need to tie those back to your performance objectives uh, and, and what you're trying to achieve with learners. Thank you everybody for attending. Thank you e-learning rock stars on the call right now for presenting.